Hi all, Bill Greenberg with PhoneScholar.com. Today is Thursday, August 12th, one day before Friday, August, Friday the 13th, woo! Okay, uh, 2010, and I do have a little surprise for you today. My son, who is unfortunately homesick from camp, but he keeps begging me to get on the video and do videos with him, so I'm gonna give you a preview of what he is. So, Andy, come on over here. Hi. This is Andy, my son, he's 10 years old, he just turned 10 on July 21st. And uh, like I said, he's a little bit under the weather today, but he's getting much better. And hopefully we'll be going camp tomorrow, right? Okay. So say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Okay. <laughs> and that's what we got with Andy. Here's a summary of what's on the website today. Google announces voice actions for Android. Voice actions is the application. And it's very similar to the iPhone voice control, but supposedly much more in-depth. And the video that I saw looks really cool, something that I really want to try to check out if and when I get an Android phone. Uh, you can do, send emails to multiple people at once, the same email, but to multiple people at once just through your voice. You can set up calls, you can get directions, you can go on Google. So it looks really cool. Now it does require uh, Android 2.2, which as everybody knows is coming preloaded on the Droid 2. Uh, and when everything, all the other ones are upgraded, the Evo now has 2.2 and the Nexus one, so you can use it for that. Uh, so check that out. Check out the video. It looks really cool. And if you have the 2.2 already in there, start using it because it looks great. Uh, with Droid 2, Adobe Flash stakes its claim. And basically, Adobe's been talking about the Flash 10.1 for a while. Uh, it is the first phone that had it was the Evo once the 2.2 upgrade went on and of course as I said the Droid 2 that's why they're highlighting in this is coming with the pre-installed now Adobe Apple and Adobe have been going back and forth and Steve Jobs said basically our format is is better for this we don't need the flash and since we have no device to show what it can do how do we know what it's going to do anyway well I have a video on there now that actually shows what the 10.1 does on the phone with the Droid 2 and it looks pretty good uh, it looks like it's going to be pretty cool. The only thing is that according to the article, they said that it does tend to drain the battery a little bit and it's still slower uploading than the iPhone. So we'll have to see because, again, Adobe's putting all its eggs kind of in this basket. And if it does turn out to be not popular with the people, then it may jump back to Steve Jobs and him being right. So this is not yet to be resolved, but take a look at the video. You'll see what it's like. And for, again, for those of you that have the uh, 2.2, you can check it out and download it. Next, Sprint Nextel to offer Epic 4G on August 31st. And the Epic 4G, as we all know, is the new Samsung Galaxy X. For that, the Epic is the Sprint version, and it's going to be available on August 31st. Now, it's, re it's available for reserve starting tomorrow through Sprint.com and in the stores. And here's the drawback, though. If you do reserve it and then don't pick it up by 6 o'clock on September 1st, you will lose your reservation. It'll go to the next person. And there's also rumors, so you have to keep on top of this, that they may actually be available on August 21st. Now, a couple of things. Number one, it's going to be $250, not the magical $200 after all the rebates and everything like that. My personal opinion is when it gets into Radio Shack, Best Buy, those places, somebody's going to sell it for 200 bucks, and everybody's going to bring it down. Uh, so I do anticipate that, but again, that's a personal opinion. Don't, don't quote me on it. But it does require, the Epic does require the seven, at least the $70 unlimited plan plus a $10 premium data plan for the 4G. So you're looking at 80 bucks a month minimum with that. If you want to use it as a high Wi-Fi spot, that's an extra 30 bucks. So it, it is going to be a little bit expensive to run, just like anything else. The more expensive it is, just like a, if you get a Ferrari, you know, it's a lot to get the oil changes on that. So it's that type of concept. Um, but again, it's going to be a terrific phone. I did put a video on it the other day, so you can check that out. Um, so if you want to reserve one, go ahead and do that. Um, sorry, I'm getting mixed, messed up here. Okay, now under categories, Sprint and uh, under category Sprint and T-Mobile, Sprint Nextel climbs to second place in JD Power survey on retail experience. Now, for those of, you, of us who have been in, in retail in the wireless industry and with the cell phones for a while, this is huge. 
because when I was in there, Verizon and T-Mobile were always battling one and two for the retail customer experience. Now, if you remember, last month I put a survey from J.D. Power or a story about J.D. Power. That was for the customer service calling into the customer call center. This is for the retail stores. And basically, T-Mobile had a score of 744. Sprint was one behind at 743. The industry average was 734. AT&T was 733 and Verizon was 729 and again this is huge the fact that number one sprints only one point behind Verizon dropped all the way to the bottom I mean T-Mobile won for the third time in a row which is not unusual they do normally dominate this but um, it's it's pretty interesting how how much Sprint has come along and a lot of people attributed to there was 8,000 people surveyed for this and they attribute to the fact that with all these new phones coming out and especially with the Evo lately that the Sprint people are doing the best job of explaining what these phones do for you and what it's going to cost overall. That's what the, the, the m and mobile those are the two biggest factors that they took into this when they asked the customers. That, or that's what the customers said their two biggest factors were. We're going to the store and seeing what the experience is. So check out that article. And then under iPhone, Verizon and Apple CDMA iPhone and engineering test may arrive in January. Okay, here we go. It's another Verizon, Apple, iPhone rumor. So I just put it on there since I put all the other ones rumors on it. But the project does have a name. It's the N92 project. So they definitely named it. And they say they're two steps away from production. So pretty interesting. Uh, we'll see if we got an iPhone in January. That's all I got for today. As for everything and for the full articles on this, w visit www.phonescholar.com. And for Andy and myself, Bill, have a great day. See you tomorrow.